up? It's your boy Nick, and today's topic, I want to give a huge disclaimer. On my channel, I want to have and facilitate these conversations, but I also realize many of them will have no definitive answer. At the very least, I am happy I have a platform where I can let people openly grieve about these occurrences, because this topic affects literally everyone in some way. So today we're going to be talking about cultural appropriation. Plop that into Google and you get the adoption of elements of one culture or identity by members of another culture or identity. This can be controversial when members of a dominant culture appropriate from disadvantaged minority cultures. This is a huge controversial topic sweeping America as minorities speak up against the mistreatment and oppression. Given the distressing things happening right now, I think this is important now more than ever to talk about. I'm going to be going into an example, but there are literally countless ways of this happening from country humans to themed adopts. But what is cultural appropriation? We have movies like Coco that are gorgeous representations from the overwhelming support by the Hispanic community to the portrayal of Native Americans in Peter Pan. So how does this pertain to furries in the art community? We make adopts and characters that use themes and ideas from everywhere. We take inspiration from pop culture and all forms of media as well as from genuine religion, racial, and cultural identities. We are going to be talking about an example that happened fairly recently. So Swishlings are a closed species that started up several months ago. The main theme being Asian cuisine and culture in each one of the designs is an intricate and beautiful stylization. Around 50% of their adopts had influences from Eastern cuisine and culture, namely Japan, with some apparently very niche foods. They recently came under fire for being insensitive to Asian communities, especially considering the outcry for the onslaught of racism towards these groups. Many comments centered around the idea that this person was gatekeeping Asian themes with their closed species as though sushi dogs weren't already a thing. They have other complaints due to price, but price seems more of a closed species debate than a cultural one, but I digress. It seemed to me like the loud minority was speaking for the majority. People who were offended came forth sooner than those who didn't care or actually enjoyed it. The design focused heavily on popular foods and dishes from dragon fruit to umami to street food, with plenty of guest artists putting in their own takes. But there are also designs I do want more input on because I don't have an opinion on them because I don't know and they could be culturally sacred. A spreadsheet was made to showcase all of the Asian themed ones in the species and I read through and it just- I have seen so many characters with these exact themes. Sont proof for their designs had a Japanese person help oversee designs which a lot of people were saying wasn't good enough because that person is from a colonialist country and can't speak for all the designs. But like I said, I can't speak on behalf of the Asian community on whether this is offensive but I truthfully believe they had no ill will or malintent from just an audience perspective. But the entire time was called for the cancellation of the species that this person worked really hard on and offered no way for them to improve despite the fact that they wanted so hard to. Even going as far as to try to raise money for Asian communities, boosting Asian artists, and trying to apologize for any misunderstandings. Each one of the designs was carefully created and tried to give beautiful imagery to Asian culture and it was unfortunate that no one tried to help explain cultural significance or help them understand things better. Each comment jump to the idea that you are white so this will never be okay. Because seeing someone mess up and immediately telling them to leave the internet is honestly a sad occurrence that happens way more than you think. I want nothing more than to believe that there was a way that this could have been okay. I'd put myself in their shoes and to see if it, if it was my own culture how would I feel. I would think maybe they could focus on having more Asian guest artists continue to donate whenever they could and maybe on each adopt pay respects to whatever part of Japan or other country it's from. What food is this? Where does it come from? Is it culturally significant? What is it made of? Like pay respects in a way, because they could have been doing a lot of good all at once, activism and inclusion, but not a single person offered any sort of help, and all the criticism just called for the cancellation on grounds of racism. If you'd like to debate on closed species, please check out my last video as I'd like to focus this conversation on cultural appropriation. So she wasn't able to expand on the history and lore of the species before backlash was given, which is a real shame because I would have loved to see her ability to pay respects to the culture and potentially bring a lot of Asian voices and help educate people with things that they had to do research on themselves. But to everyone who was upset, you win. They're changing the name and the basis of the species and are shifting away from any culture or representation of any kind and are opting for a more plant and fey based designs because we always need more of those. They're still donating to causes for the time being, but that's where the story ends, I guess. I want to reiterate, if you think this is insensitive, that's completely valid. But I couldn't imagine being pushed off the internet and being called racist for something like this. There are certainly designs that could use more explanation or potentially show more research was done, but there has to be a way to help this. Because if this is not the standard, and if I were anyone else, 
I'd be terrified of even thinking of having any other aspect of any culture in my art because what is the point if no matter how I do it, it is always going to be wrong. Speaking on behalf of other cultures and minorities is extremely problematic because it leads to misrepresenting a lot of actual grievances. But the thing is, there is a difference between black fishing and black face, even though both are wrong. There's a difference between changing your hair color to changing your skin color, wearing do-rags and saying the n-word, but they are all treated with the same vitriol from the community even if they are different degrees of bad. And even if the conversation doesn't include the minorities actually being appropriated. And yes, while the community as a whole can agree things like blackface are unilaterally not okay. Even I can't speak for the Jamaican representation or the Nigerian representation, but sooner than try to educate, we assume these people not only have the same context and concept of right and wrong that we do in current day, but we also assume they fully understand the gravity of the situation that they chose to appropriate, refuse to change, and have every intention of disgracing and using the culture of whoever they are representing. While yes, this can be the case, we never let conversation be had with those who are actually affected by these instances, and we assume all appropriation is done with bad intentions sooner than just genuine ignorance. We are very much getting used to being offended on other people's behalfs, and while there are certainly times where it is clear as day something is offensive and a bad take, when people apologize over these things, I am not in a place to accept an apology that is not intended for me. And yet, there are far more people speaking for others than people being allowed to speak for themselves. The people whose culture it represents should have the loudest voices when it pertains to them. We are forgetting what it means to be an ally. Whether it's African Americans, the LGBT, the mentally impaired, the Hispanic community, the handicapped, whoever. To be an ally means to give them a platform for which to speak of their own experiences, grievances, and what they desire moving forward. It does not mean speaking for people even if you know their motives and wants. It means directing the spotlight over to them and giving it up for just a moment. That's why we need to be able to focus on appreciation before appropriation. Learn before you incorporate something into your art. Appreciation means when you earnestly seek to learn or explore a different culture. You learn, you listen, you strive to understand. You seek to honor its beliefs and traditions, and that is why it is important to pay homage to artistry and ideas and acknowledge their origins. Give credit where it's due. In addition, doing sizable research and familiarizing yourself with the history, knowing what you're using is an offensive or deeply important to the community. Learn how to draw wheelchairs correctly. Learn how to shade darker skin tones correctly. Correctly learn the different ways people wear kimonos under certain occasions in Asian cultures. Ask yourself, are you able to speak on behalf of that community when you think something is inappropriate? Usually if I see something that has potential to be offensive, I would sooner bring it to the attention of people within that group to have their opinion. I also want you to remember, some within that group might see it as offensive and some might not. But that is the reason we can't speak for entire communities because it is a group of individuals with different backgrounds and different ideas. The fact of the matter is, Sushlings the species received sizable criticism from the AAPI community, but they also received sizable support. This also showcases the hardest part of the debate because you will not be able to appease everyone. So how do you listen to everyone's voices at once and make the right decision? Because if you asked me if dreads on fursuits is a bad take, if someone is not someone of color, I'd say no, of course not, go ahead. But someone might be really passionate and say, no, you can't do that. If both these people are black, where does that leave you? Do you question their backgrounds? Who's more equipped to speak on the situation? Because then it becomes a whose opinion is more valid question. More often than not, people will choose the opinion that suits their narrative the closest. We have people who say you aren't Latina if you can't speak Spanish. You, If you're Latinx, you're walking on Chicano culture. You can't say you're African American if you're not from Africa. You're not Christian if you eat seafood. And there are thousands of invalidations we throw at each other to say that you're not a good representation of your identity. If we're getting to a point where we are invalidating others' opinions and who they identify themselves as, we really have to ask ourselves, is this what we want from a multicultural society? People who are afraid and ignorant because we'd sooner gatekeep things than share information that helps people understand why what they're doing is wrong and how they can make it better, if at all. Cultural inclusion is incredibly important and not all appropriation is bad. I want to see a more culturally diverse and rich fandom that is able to share parts of their culture and educate others on the importance of that culture. Yes, don't use it as a cheap commodity. Offer to respect it when used if ever possible. But at the end of the day, I can't speak to the experiences of people who are not me. I can educate myself and learn and speak with others in that community, but no matter how educated I am on a topic, I should only speak for myself. 
and use whatever privilege or platform I have on something I think needs attention to give the spotlight to those less fortunate. But I have to say, I really want nothing more than to have a fandom not only culturally tolerant of one another, but able to explore and express ideas non-native to their own. I would love to exist in a culturally rich place in which people are not afraid to go beyond while researching and taking interest in the worlds of others and expressing that through art in an understanding way. I want to learn about cultural significance and be able to express those in art in a respectful and dignified way. In terms of profiting off someone's culture portion, Sushling's got hate for selling at such a high price, but I think that price and monetary value is a debate that lies both in the artist aspect and the cultural aspect in this conversation specifically. Because how much do artists deserve to be paid for their intellectual abilities to transform ideas into physical art? Sushling's genuinely wouldn't exist without Sontproof having made them. And yes, if someone had made a similar species, this conversation would still be the same. Because yes, the culture would still exist, but Sushling specifically are the artistic fusion of inspirational elements and artistic ability. Does having reference to cultures that are not your own bar an artist from having their art worth money? Because in that case, it's easier to consider culture more of a copyright. Because notably, if this is the case, this will certainly gatekeep the idea that we're better off sticking to generic characters with themes the community are already comfortable with. Monetary incentive, you can't deny, drives art. People use it to pay their bills, and so that is something to think about. But in the comments, I want people to focus on how to make things okay. I want to focus on solutions sooner than infighting because what good do these cancellations do for the fandom? They don't help people learn why they were culturally insensitive, they don't help them improve, they don't help people understand the culture or gain respect for it. Fighting people over every instance of cultural appropriation is not the answer. We have to help the community learn and grow, support and showcase the good, criticize and improve the bad. In fact, if you know of any of these instances of cultural appropriation in the fandom, please put them in the comments and most importantly, offer a way that they can improve. Is it to donate to specific charities, having more POC artists, what can they do to help this case? But these are the growing pains of a multicultural society, defining barriers and drawing lines in the sand while helping show the right way of sharing our cultures with others. Let me know your thoughts down below. I love learning about you guys in the comments and I hope I didn't miss the mark with this one. But as always, my name is Nick and remember, keep it simple.